Hey there folks, Cam Butcher out here. So for today's like a Monday installment of the most recent news in fisheries and fisheries conservation, unfortunately I have some bad news. And that has to do with the attempted emergency declaration issued by Governor Wes Moore for the Chesapeake Bay in response to the blue catfish and other invasive species like northern snakehead, flathead catfish, and that general invasion of the Chesapeake Bay and its tributaries. So Governor Wes Moore, to his credit, he tried to initiate with the federal government an emergency declaration on the Chesapeake because what a lot of our fishery scientists and fisheries managers, I believe are coming around to now is the outsized threat posed by blue catfish to the Chesapeake and a lot of our very critical fisheries, blue crab especially, but also different perch species like white and yellow perch. Because at the end of the day, all these species, let's be clear, all these species prey upon some of our commercially viable and commercially important species here in the Chesapeake, but especially blue cats. Because, and I'll get into another video that you'll see coming in the near future about why I, and I think a lot of the other fisheries managers are coming around to the fact that blue cats pose the greatest threat. But for right now, let's get into the emergency declaration, why it was initiated and unfortunately why it was rejected. So first things first, blue cats, where did they come from? So back in the 70s, down in Virginia waters, we, and by we, I mean humans, because don't get it twisted, we are by far the most invasive species on this planet. But putting that aside for the moment, we got to the point where we had degraded and overfished and polluted our waterways so much that there was no longer a recreational viable fishery that was really available. And the idea that fisheries managers came up with was to introduce blue catfish. Now, blue catfish are not native to the East Coast. They're native to the Mississippi River like Basin and all those waterways, as well as actually down into Central America. I didn't know they stretched that far, but as a result of a past interview that I've done with fisheries biologists down in Virginia, I was made aware of that fact. But anyway, moving on, it was believed at the time that blue catfish would not be able to tolerate saltier water and as a result would not be able to spread beyond the rivers they were actually introduced to. Now we know better, but now it's too late. And now they are in every major tributary to the Chesapeake Bay. That's how far they've spread up through Maryland waters and beyond. And what you're dealing with in blue catfish is a fish that can grow to be over a hundred pounds and is an opportunistic omnivore. They will eat almost anything. They're almost like tiger sharks. It's like if they can fit it in their mouth, they'll eat it. I don't care if it's fish, crustacean, vegetation, you know, you name it, dirty diapers, like <laughs> blue cats will eat almost anything. So recognizing this and looking at some of the studies that have come out about how much they prey upon, especially blue crabs. And if you're from Maryland, you know just how important the blue crab fishery is to the state and the Chesapeake. Well, the governor's office decided to file an emergency declaration with the federal government to try to achieve or obtain additional funds to be able to combat the threat. Unfortunately, the declaration was denied. Why was it denied? Well, I'm going to read this pretty much verbatim, but in order for us to obtain that funding, in order for this emergency declaration to be declared, the state has to have sustained a sufficient level of large, sudden, and unexpected decrease in a fisheries stock. And that loss has to have caused a significant loss in the commercial fishery, its revenue, etc. We're not there yet. And maybe we never will be, you know, and I think there's some blue cat guys out there. I got some buddies out there who are going to say like, you know, this, this is overblown in a lot of the same ways that I've said, you know, uh, snakehead and their threat is overblown. I think I have a little bit more scientific backing than the blue cat guys do. <laughs> because, and I'll get to, I'll get into a later video, but there is documented invasive impact significantly for blue cats within the scientific literature. But what it really comes down to for federal funding, is economic impact because at the end of the day money talks that's just the way of the world the way of the world as it is today anyway so the emergency declaration was denied where does that leave us not in a great place because at this point now we're going to be looking at we need to wait until it's bad enough and has enough impact on our fisheries here in order to obtain that federal funding when alternatively we could hopefully find ways to get ahead of it better if we'd obtained the funding, but it is what it is. What are we going to do about it? Here's what Maryland DNR is going to be doing. 
and it's pulling this directly from a Bay Journal article. And if you're not subscribed to the Bay Journal, I highly recommend them because they really keep us up to date with the latest in fisheries and fisheries conservation in the Chesapeake and kind of the Delmarva area. So Maryland DNR, they're gonna be increasing blue catfish research and monitoring programs. And I do plan on talking in the near future with some of the fisheries biologists who are doing exactly that research. Secondly, they're gonna be urging recreational and commercial anglers to increase their harvest of blue catfish and other invasives, because let's be clear, this emergency declaration wasn't just focused on blue cats. It also covered Northern snakehead, flathead catfish, and other species that have, you know, invaded the bay. And third, they're gonna be working more to educate the public on the impact of blue cats, Northern snakehead, and flatheads on the bay. Now, with all that being said, you know, these are a lot of educational programs, a lot of kind of interfacing with the public, which is important. I'm not saying it's not, but is it going to be able to completely fill the hole left by not obtaining the federal funding for the emergency declaration? No, that's why they apply for it. If they didn't need it, they wouldn't have applied for it. But there's also there's more details about what they're actually going to do. Like there are programs out there, like the certified local farm and fish program here in Maryland that is dedicated to trying to increase the local purchases. And by local purchases, I mean locally sourced food products within the different colleges and other state institutions, which is great. I, I completely agree with that for multiple reasons, but that's one way they're gonna try and increase the harvest of the invasives like blue cats, snakehead, flathead, is by trying to encourage their consumption. But I wanna make it clear one more time. By far the most populous and the greatest threat within this kind of basket of invasives within these three is going to be the blue cat. And I, I'll get into reasons later. I can already see the comments rolling. I'll get into reasons later why I think that is. That'll be in the next video or a coming video where I really dive into that and why I think they're the biggest threat. But I just wanted to kind of pass on that information. Again, thanks much to the Bay Journal for keeping us informed. And sorry to pass along the bad news about us not getting the additional federal funding that we need for this emergency declaration in the Bay. Because now we're in a position where if that impact is going to happen, we're not going to be able to get ahead of it in the way that we would have had this emergency declaration actually been approved. So find links to the articles in the video description. Let me know your questions and thoughts. You know, argue with me. I got no problem with that <laughs> about which ones you think are actually the biggest threat. And we can discuss that more in upcoming videos. All right, folks. Hope you found this both informative and enjoyable. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Have a good one.